Hello, I don't know if this is going or not. Hello, hello. Hello again, everybody. <clears throat> Good afternoon. It's snowing like uh, the Dickens out here in New Brunswick, Canada. I don't know if we'll make it through the winter or not, but uh, I will be very glad when spring comes because it's March 17th and it's snowing again and I'm really tired of winter. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully soon. We did have a week of, of very mild weather where a lot of snow melted and the ice in the driveway was starting to go down a little bit. But anyway, we're going to continue on here with um, read the reading of The Financial Matrix by Orrin Woodward. I hope you've listened to the other um, the other streams that I've put up. Um, so we'll, and if you haven't, this one is chapter six, so you can go back and listen to the other uh, chapters of the reading to to catch up before you listen to this one. Um, <clears throat> so this is chapter six, long term dreams. Still, in order to the to live the life you've always wanted you're probably going to have to face some things you've always avoided. Essentially, a person's circumstances will not change until the person does. This is where long-term dreams come into play. People cannot change their future until they have the courage to envision it. After all, a dream is just tomorrow's reality expressed as an idea today. And only when people see the dream in their mind are they capable of bringing it into reality. In other words, the dream must come before the action. Unfortunately, few people have a long-term financial dream. Instead, most people are like sailboats without a rudder, merely blown in the financial wind. Lori and I knew that our long-term dream was bigger than just being job optional. We wanted total independence from the financial matrix debt system without having to live like paupers. In a similar fashion, it is necessary to invest the time to express this long-term dream as an idea today. As my good friend and co-founder of life, Bill Lewis says, it's not how big your dream, it's how long you dream big. Success, in a sense, is a picture in the mind's eye that you maintain no matter what. What success picture do you have the courage to imagine? Once a person eliminates debt, his or her money begins to accumulate quickly, so he or she should not delay in cultivating a dream for the future. Regrettably, many people think the choice is between debt and their dreams because they cannot imagine how they could wipe out their debt and still have enough money to live their dreams. But this is exactly what long-term dreaming is about. Dreams do come true for those who are true to their dreams. The first part of being true to a dream is expressing it verbally because the long-term dream is defining the life a person desires once Time and money are no longer constraints. To be sure, achieving dreams <clears throat> sorry about that. To be sure, achieving dreams demands time and sacrifice, but that is why they're called long-term dreams. A person cannot fix in months what has taken years to mass up. All real change must first begin with a change in thinking. To change our finances, Lori and I knew we had to change the way we thought about money, time, and wealth creation. This is why Buffett's advice was so important to us. We need not only financial de defense to minimize expenses, but also financial offense to maximize investments. In today's microwave world, a decade may seem like an eternity, but in reality, time passes quickly. Do you remember where you were when the Twin Towers fell? I certainly do. I received a phone call from my good friend Chris Brady in time to turn on my rarely used television and see them come down. I was practically in a state of shock. Defining moments like this are rarely forgotten and are remembered vividly as if they happened yesterday. But it's almost unbelievable <clears throat> that that all happened 
uh, he's saying 14 years ago, but now what are we coming up in 20 years? Like I said, time flies regardless of what we do with it along the way. Realize that a decade is going to go by whether you develop a long-term dream or not. However, your financial results will be much different depending upon the choices you make during that decade. Lori and I committed to a decade of discipline in order to radically change our finances. Inexorably, the decade has come and gone, but the discipline has changed everything. We applied the three billionaire secrets to wealth consistently. And just as an aside here, the last video outlined what those three billionaire secrets to wealth were. So you can go back and listen to that. So we applied the three billionaire secrets to wealth consistently. And by late 2004, 10 years to the day later, we paid off the mortgage on our dream home. We were officially free, free from the financial matrix. Better yet, we had not borrowed any money since then. I'm not saying that the, I'm not saying this to shed light on us, but rather to illuminate the effectiveness of the principles taught in the financial fitness program. The principles work. The only question is whether you will discipline yourself to apply them. Thankfully, this made much <clears throat> thankfully this is made much easier by associating with others in the life community who are also applying the defensive and offensive principles consistently in order to break free from the financial matrix. As the Bible says, iron sharpens iron in Proverbs 27, 17. There are several questions to answer in developing a long-term financial dream. First, if you knew your dream couldn't fail, what would it include? Needless to say, your dream should include more than just material things like houses, cars, and toys. It should also involve the type of person you want to become, the type of friends you want to associate with, and the legacy you intend to leave. Your long-term dream, in effect, should be the, success, the successful realization of your tombstone test. This is where you see yourself at your funeral and imagine what people will say about your life and work. Once you know your long-term dream, you can then identify the proper roadmap to take you to take you from your present reality to your future dream. That is really good information right there. And I would encourage you to rewind this and listen to it again. That's all I'm going to say about that. The Ant and the Elephant. Author Jack Canfield writes that you have control over only three things in life. The thoughts you think, the images you visualize, and the action you take. Since conscious mind thinks in words while the subconscious mind thinks in images, Few people realize the subconscious mind is actually actually much more powerful than the conscious one. Olympian Vince Pacente, for example, termed the two minds the ant and the elephant. He explained that the conscious ant mind stimulates 2,000 neurons per second, while the subconscious elephant mind stimulates 4 billion neurons per second. In other words, the subconscious mind is two million times more powerful in programming the brain than is, this, is the conscious mind. Researcher Eric Colonies elaborates, Scientists are discovering that the brain is a visionary device, the primary function of which is to create pictures in our minds that can be used as blueprints for things that don't exist. They are also learning that our brains can work subconsciously to solve problems that we cannot crack through that we cannot crack through conscious reasoning, and that the brain is a relentless pattern seeker, constantly reinventing the world. <clears throat> that is really interesting. Um, I know a lot of people uh, really don't understand, or they think that people who are into this whole visualization uh, movement are kind of nuts. However, Science proves it out, or the study of the brain um, does kind of prove that out. And I think from our own experience, 
Um, children have fantastic imaginations. And I think it's only when we, you know, we um, get into the educational, um, into our educational institutions where that, that's almost intentionally dumbed down and dulled. Um, because kids, it, left to their own devices, come up with some incredible um, little inventions. Um, there's been some wonderful inventions by high school kids. Um, I just watched a YouTube video not too long ago about a, a teenager in high school that developed a way to clean up trash from the oceans, okay? So, and it's very, very effective. So, I mean, if your mind isn't dumbed down or dulled or programmed to think a certain way, your imagination can really take you to the moon and back, literally. And you don't have to be NASA to imagine that. <laughs> so, to continue. To accomplish a long-term dream, you must learn to program your subconscious mind with positive images of your future life. Now, okay, so he quotes Albert Einstein, and but having found out about Albert Einstein, I'm not quite sure if this is actually his, what he said, but... Uh, he says, as Albert Einstein once stated, imagination is everything. It is a preview of life's coming attractions. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not suggesting sitting on the sofa all day and visualizing your future will mysteriously make all your dreams come true. <clears throat> Rather, it's the alignment of the logical mind, your, the ant mind, and emotional mind, the elephant mind, married to hard work that achieves big time results. So the two, your conscious and your subconscious, has to be working together to get the results. As Olympian P Peter Vidmar stressed, visualization is not a substitute for hard work and dedication, but if you add it to your training regime, whether in sports, business, or your personal relationships, you will prepare your mind for success which is the first step in achieving all your goals and dreams. My good friend Rob Robson's, Robson, for instance, changed himself from the inside out by going on a media fast to cleanse him from the negative thoughts holding him back. He replaced his TV, radio, and magazines with inspiring audios, books, and seminars, and today he and his lovely wife Kenyon own one of the most profitable life businesses. Success starts with a proper vision. Then it is backed up by consistent effort. Historian Eugene Ferguson noted similarly when he wrote, Pyramids, cathedrals, and rockets exist not because of geometry, theory of structures, or therm thermodynamics, but because they were first pictures, literally visions, in the minds of those who first conceived them. Usually, the significant governing decisions regarding an artisan's or an engineer's designs have been made before the artisan picks up tools or the engineer's turn to his drawing board. While most people say they have to see to believe, achievers actually believe to see. A dream, again, is first seeing in the mind and then acting in the world to make the dream a reality. Dr. Maxwell Maltz emphasized the goals that the creative mechanisms seek to achieve are mental images or mental pictures, which we create by the use of imagination. Achievers imagine so vividly that it is experienced as real, leading Maltz to conclude, Clim clinical psychologists have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that the human nervous system cannot tell the difference between an actual experience and an experience imagined vividly and in detail. When you understand the power of belief, you are on the verge of moving any mountain standing in your way. And that's interesting that he uses that analogy there, that you can, you're on the verge of moving any mountain standing in your way. Uh, in the Bible, Jesus said, if you believe, you can move mountains. In 1987, for example, a struggling actor who couldn't even afford to pay his bills drove his old Toyota up Mulholland Drive into the Hollywood Hills. As he stared down at the city of angels, he imagined his future in vivid detail. By feeding his subconscious mind the long-term dreams he imagined, 
This young actor experienced feelings as if they were real, even though they were only imagined in his mind. Before he left, he wrote himself a check dated for Thanksgiving Day 1995 for acting services rendered in the amount of $10 million. To practically everyone else, this action would have seemed absurd for only the upper echelon actors ever made that type of compensation. Uh Uh-oh. Jim Carrey's subconscious, however, experienced the event as real, and years later it was real. In fact, Jim Carrey has surpassed $20 million for acting services rendered. If anything, he didn't dream big enough. Actor Jim Carrey consistently fed his elephant mind the future he envisioned and accomplished what author Claude Bristol describes, the subtle force of repeated suggestion overcomes our reason. It acts directly on our emotions and our feelings and finally penetrates to the very depths of our subconscious minds. It's the repeated suggestion that makes you believe. All right, so I'm going to end this there. And tomorrow I'm going to um, talk a little bit more about this ant and the elephant. Um, But this was um, a really good section on your dreams on visualized visualizing first identifying and then visualizing your dreams um i, I just think it I, I i'm actually going to reread that before i go on to the next one uh it's just really important and i know our conditioning is kind of to the to or held back to the extent that most of us have given up on our dreams. Many of us don't even have any dreams. Uh, We just abandoned them. Um, Or the dreams are too small. And I think that's, that's part of the whole problem with this society. We have, instead of working towards a big dream, we've gotten work and then tailored our, or tamped down the dreams to fit that job that we have. So, um, yeah, I think it's maybe time that we got bigger dreams, better dreams, uh, and align them. If you're a Christian, align those with what God says, um, and seek his guidance for the dreams in your life. All right. I'm going to end it on that note. Uh, I'll have another one. The one tomorrow will be entitled the ant and the elephant. All right, peace out. Have a lovely day.